What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and recently I did a back to school tech guide for 2018 and I mentioned picking up an external desktop hard drive or even portable hard drive and I did get a couple of you guys mentioned to me do I have any tips, tricks or things to look out for when I'm picking up a external desktop hard drive and seeing that I've picked up well over well too many at this point, I definitely do have a couple pointers out there that I would definitely love to share with you guys. So today, we're going to be taking a look at some of my tips, tricks and pointers for picking up the right external drive for your needs here in 2018. Now this list that we do have here today is more for your external drives but could definitely be applied to internal hard drives as well and really doesn't exactly cover servers and NAS drives because let's face it, if you're going to be needing a server or if you're going to be needing a NAS, chances are you probably have a good idea about storage and uh, we'll definitely be going into that in a separate video. So today we're here with my pointers in real no particular order, they're kind of a bit here and there, a lot of these things do need to be taken into consideration at the same time but I kind of had to put them in a list for this particular video. So with that being said, let's jump into my ideas and pointers that I generally look out for and the first thing is size. Now no, I'm not exactly talking about the capacity of the storage of these guys, I'm actually talking about the physical size of these drives. Making the choice between a two and a half inch drive or a three and a half inch drive will definitely help you to determine what drive you're actually looking for and also too will help you decide what your maximum size is in terms of the actual capacity of these drives and I guess also do pricing and brand and a lot of other things also too right on the fact whether you're looking for a two and a half inch drive or a larger three and a half inch desktop drive and making the choice between a two and a half inch drive and a three and a half inch option is actually relatively pretty simple if you plan to be on the go quite a lot, a two and a half inch drive is generally recommended as they're pretty easy to carry around, they're small, they're relatively lightweight and most importantly, they run off a single USB port, meaning you don't need an external power supply or extra USB cable to run this thing, it'll run off a single USB 3 drive or USB-C if you are picking up a newer drive and it is a really simple process. Whereas your larger three and a half inch drives do have the issue of actually needing a 12 volt power in. Now three and a half inch drives are usually more recommended for those of you who are at a dock station or using a desktop PC where they're just a lot easier to use. Again, two and a half inch drives draw less power meaning they can be run off that USB and your larger guy does need a 12 volt input. So that's one of the main differences as opposed to just size. There is definitely a power requirement with the bigger options. So if you find yourself on the go, a two and a half inch drive is definitely recommended and a better choice and if you're docked or on a desktop, buying yourself a three and a half inch drive is going to be better there. Now performance wise though we also do have tested out and in terms of performance between the two it really isn't that much of a difference but if you want to know more check out that video right there. Now with that being said, moving on from size, we also to get the capacity or the size of the drive. Now capacity is another thing that will dictate what kind of physical size, so they kind of go hand in hand. A smaller drive will have a smaller storage limit, whereas a bigger drive will have obviously a bigger storage limit. And with two and a half inch drives capping out at around that four terabyte marker here in 2018, and with these larger three and a half inch drives capping out at around the 10 terabyte marker, there is definitely a difference and will help you decide which which one you actually need. Now as for how much storage you do need, this is definitely a very personal question as it comes down to what exactly you're going to be doing. If you're doing things like video editing, video storage or you're wanting to store a whole bunch of photos, obviously a larger in terms of size and also to storage drive is definitely more applicable. However with that being said, if you're on the go a lot and just want to use it for virtual machines on the go or for school and document files, obviously a smaller and lower capacity drive may be definitely something more suited to you. But for general usage, it really comes down to what you're actually going to be doing as to how big the size is needed. But my general rule of thumb is as follows. If you're grabbing yourself a smaller 2.5 inch drive, around that 1 terabyte market is definitely where I'll recommend, as anything under 1 terabyte is kind of a waste of space. You can get up to 4 terabytes in this form factor, so why buy something less than a terabyte in this kind of form factor? And let's face it, 1 terabyte is really, really cheap here in Australia and is even cheaper in places like the US. And when it comes to 
see larger three and a half inch options, grabbing something around that two to four terabyte range is also too something that I do recommend. They're physically larger, meaning you should really be getting physically more space in that guy. So around that two terabyte marker is definitely something that I can recommend. But as for how much storage you actually need on these guys, you'll definitely have to do your research as to what you want to be using them for. But again, take a look at what you're gonna be doing for what you actually need. And something that rhymes with need is also to speed. Now speed is another factor that you do wanna keep in mind. And whilst most mechanical external drives perform at about the same speed, there is definitely a slight difference between 5200 RPM drives and also to 7200 RPM drives. And also too, there's other things such as SSDs in the two and a half inch form factor that can deliver much better performance. And whilst we found out right here when it comes to the different speed of drives, it doesn't exactly make too much of a difference. At the end of the day, it is still definitely something you want to keep in mind. And on top of the actual mechanical drives inside speed, we also do want to take a look at the USB connection speed, whether that'll be 3.0, 2.0, 3.1, or a USB-C interface. We do need to keep in mind that having the faster speed interface is definitely something that I do recommend. If you are looking at something like a USB 2 drive, basically forget about it. As today, we do have large capacity drives. If you were looking at a one terabyte USB 2 drive to fill or empty or transfer one terabyte with the data would take over 13 hours of transfer time with relatively similar speeds that you'll get out of USB 2.0 drive. It is an absolute nightmare. And whilst you're probably thinking, I'm never gonna transfer a terabyte of data in one go, in 13 hours that is, it is a bit of a problem when you think of day-to-day -day usage. If you're just moving one or two gigs here and there, you could be saving so much time by using a USB 3 device than if you're just going ahead and using a USB 2 drive. And just for reference, that same one terabyte of data could easily be moved in just about two hours versus 13 hours if you were using a USB 3 enabled drive. So be sure to be looking at least at USB 3 when it comes to speed. As USB 2 really just doesn't cut it. Now, as I did mention in the speed department, we also do have the tech behind it. Now, sure, it's great to have a fast USB 3 interface, but if the actual drive in there, the mechanical hard drive or SSD can't take advantage of it, you're really not gonna be getting much of a good experience. And that is where the internal components really do come in. And that is the fourth point that I do look at, and that is the drive inside. Whether it is, again, a mechanical drive, an SSD setup, or a RAID setup, taking a look at what is inside of the drives is another key factor. For a standard mechanical drive, it is perfectly fine offering for most day-to-day -day usage tasks. However, if you find yourself on the go doing video editing and that kind of stuff, you do want max throughput speeds, where an SSD drive would be a a much better option. And I guess just as an added benefit, SSDs are becoming more and more popular, bringing the prices down and also to offering much better ruggedness and also to much better durability. And I guess speed is another awesome factor. Though with that being said, SSD drives are usually much more expensive and do have the problem is once they're dead, they're dead. There's no recovery like you can have on mechanical hard drives. So when it comes to actually picking the tech inside of this guy, looking at speed and also to the drives inside of these guys is very, very important. Again, as I did say, for most day-to-day -day tasks, you're going to be perfectly served very well by a standard mechanical drive, but if you are planning to do things like video editing on the go, looking at something like an SSD option may be a little bit more compelling than your standard hard drive setup. Now, yes, with that being said, there's also to the RAID option that will take two mechanical drives and RAID them together for better performance, or two SSDs and RAID them together for even better performance, but do keep in mind RAID drives are not exactly as popular, do have the problem is once they're dead if they're in a RAID 0 configuration you've lost all your data and then on top of that as I did say they're much more expensive so price point on RAID drive can be much more expensive. Now, speaking of expensive things, we do have the price, and this is definitely something a lot of us are gonna be looking at first, usually when we're looking at the drives themselves, and price is something just like storage that you have to work out for yourself. Though that being said, mechanical drives definitely have come down quite a lot in recent years, and one terabyte drives cost next to nothing these days, but again, when it comes to the actual price of your drive, you really wanna be looking at how much storage you want, what features you want, and also to how much you're willing to pay in your budget. Here in Australia, 
Australia anyway, a four terabyte drives comes in at around 180 Australian dollars and the one terabyte offering is around $80 there. So really they're not too bad when it comes to large capacity storage. Though with that being said, another thing to keep in mind when it comes to the price point is cheapest is not always the best and expensive is also too not always the best. We need to be looking at the drives inside of these guys that make them up and also to looking at other features and specifications rather than simply just the price tag. For example, this particular drive offers a really cool 2.5 inch form factor with other options such as wireless access, a battery bank built in and has a real ton of actually really cool features. But looking at the price tag here compared to this drive, you would think that this drive is better because it's more expensive. But if we look at the specs of this drive, it's only one terabyte versus two, three or even four terabytes of other drives and it isn't exactly offering us a ton of storage which is what you may be looking for. So when it comes to the actual price point, don't just pick the most expensive or don't just pick the cheapest. Look at the features, look at the specifications and make your comparisons there rather than simply just the price tag. As again, there's definitely a lot of other drives out there offering some really cool features that you may not need or that you may find really, really helpful. Now, one of the final things you will definitely want to consider when picking up an external drive is the actual brand of the drive. Obviously, buying from a reputable brand is key, but also to try and go for manufacturers that actually make the drives inside these guys. For example, companies like WD and Seagate are manufacturers of internal desktop and also to notebook hard drives. So for example, this WD Elements drive will have a WD Blue drive inside of it, and this desktop elements drive will also too have a WD Blue inside of this guy. And on the Seagate side, if you are looking at a Seagate hard drive, you'll also to find Seagate drives featuring Seagate Barracuda internal drives. And there's other companies out there such as Toshiba also to putting in Toshiba drives, but it is generally best to go with manufacturers of drives when it comes to picking up an external drive. Now the reason why I do like to go ahead and buy WD drives that have WD drives in them or Seagate drives that have Seagate drives in them is if you think about it from a brand perspective, why would a company sell off their better drives to other manufacturers to put into their external drives when Seagate and WD can put the better drives into their own units. Now, with that being said, a WD drive with a WD Blue inside of it versus another manufacturer that's also to put a WD Blue inside of it is going to be just about the same on performance depending on how the controller is implemented. But at the end of the day, you're more likely to get a better unit out of the manufacturer that actually made the drive because they're generally going to be keeping the better units for themselves to make their brand look a whole lot better. So for me, I generally like to pick a brand that actually actually makes the internal drives. Now, if you are looking at SSDs or RAID setups, you do want to go ahead and look at what brands are actually making the SSDs inside of it and generally pick it up from there. Samsung is a really great option in terms of the SSD front as they are a SSD flash manufacturer and they make everything from flash chips that go into the SSDs and also to the controllers, meaning you're getting a complete Samsung package rather than some Samsung flash here and some other company controller here. Samsung does everything in-house and does it really, really well. So for me, when I pick a brand, I usually try and go with brands that actually make the internal drives. Again, WD and also to Seagate when it comes to, well, the external mechanical drives and also to Samsung for the SSD side. Now, don't get me wrong, there's also to a lot of other great companies out there that are actually making really good deals with companies like Seagate and also to WD. But for the most part, I generally try and pick these drives that I have here. So there we go, those are my few tips and tricks that I generally use when going ahead and picking up an external drive. Now do keep in mind, yeah, when it comes to external drives, it can be sort of a luck of a draw situation. You may find yourself with a really good drive or you may get a complete lemon and a die within a year and it be a really unfortunate situation. So as much as you've done all your research and that kind of stuff, you may unfortunately just pick up a dud. So I guess the final tip that I do have is buy from a seller that is offering good warranty support. Here in Australia, good warranty is at least one year, maybe even two years. For example, these drives here that I pick up usually have anywhere from two to three years worth of warranty. So I'm definitely covered if something does go wrong. So for me, I always try and get good warranty there. But I've also too gone ahead and left some links down in that description box to some external SSDs and also to external hard drives that I personally own or recommend and they are really, really great there. But let me know down in that comment section if you have your own tips and tricks that you like to follow when picking up an external drive. Again, let me know down in that comment section. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.